Thank you very much. I appreciate being here. Uh, one of my uh, reasons for becoming um, again involved in the uh, instruction courses related to metal detoxification was my uh, interest in making sure that you folks knew to prepare your patients prior to mobilizing metals, um, especially mercury. The key letter uh, we use for lead, the EDTA, really wraps that molecule, my image is it really wraps that molecule up and, and so it doesn't have as much of a chance as of creating oxidation stress as it mobilizes. However, with the other chelators, the, there is some chance of increased oxidation stress and I had seen back in 95, 96, um, two people that had been given DMPS without any preparation at all. They'd had their amalgams removed, went from the dentist's office to the doctor's office. They gave them a big push of DMPS, and they started having headaches and feeling poorly that dragged on for several weeks. And because of my interest in mercury, they were sent to me. And on the intracellular um, white blood cell analysis, uh, these two people were low in glutathione. And so I started looking into glutathione, and as we uh, raised their glutathione levels back at that time by giving them precursors, the NAC, for example, uh, they began to improve, and we also gave them intravenous glutathione. And it became clear to me that some way of getting glutathione into the system was really important um, in um, regard to the metals. As Boyd uh, already mentioned, when you're exposed to mercury, one of the first things that is documented to happen, this happens with lead and the other metals also, is you deplete your glutathione. So, okay, that's the, all right. Um, so as my interest, I became uh, kind of a glutathione um, fanatic and read about it for about 10 years and then came up with the idea of putting it into a liposome. And I was very fortunate to uh, be able to get a study done in a lab that has specialized in lipid metabolism and uh, vascular disease. Um, uh, Mickey Avaram, who's the professor in charge of the lab, has published over 300 papers in lipid uh, metabolism and told me just a few months ago that he has now been cited over 11,000 times in the literature. So this, is, this was done in a, uh, an environment that really understands uh, um, vascular disease. Which button am I supposed to be pressing? Oh, okay. Oh, thanks. Oh, it's the pointer. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, low tech. <laughs> I got my function. So we've talked about the uh, uh, qualities of glutathione, but in a brief review, it's an antioxidant. It detoxifies by binding to toxins and f facilitating their removal. And uh, that GST, I, in explaining it to my patients, I tell them that's the matchmaker enzyme. Uh, without a matchmaker, you have to go through a lot of encounters to meet the right person. In this situation, it introduces the glutathione to the right toxins. And without the GST being present, you need a lot more molecules of glutathione around to enhance the opportunity for that encounter to occur. Um, glutathione, as we mentioned, has been involved in mercury removal, and we'll touch on that. It's also uh, been reported to be involved as a uh, mechanism that may help slow, um, uh, well, it's been reported uh, for the neutralization and removal of mycotoxins, and it turns out to be a cell signal in immune cells, and the cells that um, make the decision about uh, whether to go to Th1 or Th2, meaning a functional efficient uh, T cell uh, system or the um, uh, cell immunity system or the Th2 chronic inflammation, if you lower the glutathione, it increases the release of cytokines associated with chronic inflammation. So that's probably where you're hearing about the chronic inflammation that's coming up in people that are depleted of glutathione. Um, we're going to cover a lot. If you have questions, um, my um, contact information is uh, drg at readysorb.com is on your um, books, and I have a uh, you can contact me after the, the talk, and I have put out a little card uh, where I can be found. And um, so low glutathione is associated with a lot of diseases. Uh, you've heard about autism. Cystic fibrosis is interesting because that's the, in the human, that um, they're missing the gene for the protein that carries glutathione and other large anionic uh, molecules across membranes. And if you want to know how important that is, just take a look at uh, a child with cystic fibrosis. They have lung problems because they don't, they're not able to put as much uh, glutathione in the extra 
um, cellular uh, lymphatic fluid that lines the alveolar sac. And uh, so they build up a lot of mucus and are prone to infection. And they have similar problems in the GI tract. So you get an idea of where glutathione plays a role in the lung as well as the GI tract. In Parkinson's, you have a deficiency of glutathione in the substantia nigra cells as the first indicator of abnormality. And they may have normal levels of glutathione in their blood. So you can have compartments of the body that are low in glutathione while your circulating glutathione is normal. And this has created a lot of confusion about um, glutathione in general and how to diagnose things. But if you see somebody with Parkinson's, for example, well, you know that they're low in glutathione in that cell area. The same is true in uh, asthma. It's now been shown that children with um, severe asthma are low in glutathione in the extracellular lung fluid. And so they've got a deficiency uh, localized also. Another area, uh, diabetes, um, when it's poorly controlled has, uh, or diabetes in general is low in glutathione systemically and particularly when it's poorly controlled. And that's important um, because the building blocks of glutathione don't work. It's published by an article, the author is Darman, D-A-R-M-A-U-N. And I'm happy to send you the whole article if you uh, want to contact me. And they gave NAC, which is one of the building blocks of glutathione. And um, it's known to raise glutathione normally, but in these children undergoing severe oxidation stress, it did not raise their glutathione, even when they gave it intravenously. So it wasn't a matter of absorption. And I'll show you some candidate areas where these things are being blocked. And then you heard about viral disease, both ac acute and chronic. Um, so why do we need glutathione? Well, it turns out that in order for a cell to make energy in the mitochondria, in undergoing the oxidative phosphorylation, it uses oxygen, and about 2 to 5% of the time, you're going to end up making free radicals, even in an absolutely normal situation. When you have abnormal problems like an accumulation of metals, you're going to make even more um, free radicals coming out of your mitochondria. And it turns out that glutathione plays a huge role in preventing uh, damage to the mitochondria, both inside the mitochondria. It's made in the cytoplasm, and is, uh, there's an active process that carries it into the mitochondria. These reactive oxygen species cause oxidative stress, which will cause damage to uh, lipoproteins, and we'll go into that a little more. But basically, your polyunsaturated lipoproteins are gr at greater risk, and I'll show you uh, why. And when your membranes get oxidized, this is what happens. In the outside world, even an uh, iron ship becomes oxidized, the membrane falls apart. The same thing can happen in the cell, but usually you, before you get to the point where the cell necrosis and falls apart, the body has this built-in mechanism that Dr. Haley went into about apoptosis, so it kind of self-digests those uh, cells to prevent the inflammation that occurs when they die. So glutathione has this prominent sulfur molecule and that molecule is able to donate an uh, electron as well as it's able to give off the hydrogen proton. Usually, it took, I only have figured this out recently, but when a cell, uh, when a molecule donates an electron, usually the proton, the hydrogen, goes along with it. And it offers a unique platform that is more soluble than cysteine. You've got glycine up here, cysteine in the middle that has the SH group, and then uh, glutamine. And the configuration of where the glutamine is attached uh, to this is uh, unique inside the cell because inside the cell, this is one of the few uh, peptides that resist the enzyme peptidase. So once you have glutathione formed, it's likely to stay in the cell. 